Acts 15. Yeah, Acts 15. Trying to think, where did we leave off last time? Right there. Okay. 40 in, I think. Oh. Yeah, right about verse 10. Yeah, so uh, Acts 15, verse uh, verse 10. No, verse 6. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. That's the matter of circumcision. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago, God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. After they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first had visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written, After this I will return, and we will build again the tabernacle of David which has fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and the opportunity to come together and fellowship around it. Um, I just, uh, I'm thankful, Lord, to, to, um, to see what happened with, with, with Glenn's eyesight. It's, it's just really exciting to see that. And I can, I can, we can all see, just see the excitement in Glenn. And, and that's just a, a wonderful thing to see, Lord, and, and just that, that comfort that, that comes from that. We thank you for that, and we thank you uh, again for your word in all things in your name. Amen. 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 So, so we, we like I said we've been working down through this passage here, and uh, we are in this issue in verse nine, ten, and eleven, where Peter has stood up. He said, "You know, God made a choice among us, among the 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 twelve, that I would go and share the gospel with a Gentile. He's the first one to go to a Gentile. We saw last time he went to Cornelius, not." other Gentiles. Right. The other members weren't told to go to other Gentiles. And he went and we saw back when we studied it and again last week, the issue that he actually taught the gospel of the kingdom. He did not teach the gospel of the grace of God. I want to be, be clear on that issue. Um, verse 9, he says, put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. So just like they believe, we believe. So verse 10, I want to spend some time in now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? So, just to let me ask a question: that yoke upon the neck of the disciples. What what's he talking about there? The law. The law. law. Okay, very very important to understand that what they're talking about is the law, and what what Peter's saying is, don't tempt God. Don't put people under the law. So come with me, if you would, to Matthew 4, verse 7. Verse, Matthew 4, verse 5. This is the account, one of two accounts of... Satan tempting the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to remember when we read this, some so often we, we, we read this account and we go, Whew, boy, that was close. Satan, Satan, Satan almost tripped him up. That, that's not the issue that's going on here. What you see here is the proof that Jesus didn't have that sin nature, that he lived that perfect life. Peter says he was, sinned, he, 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 uh, was tempted in all ways like we are. Well, you see that here. And we've studied that. We can do it again sometime, not today, but I just want to get the context here. But look at it in verse 5. Then the devil taketh him, Lord Jesus Christ, up into the holy city, and setteth, setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning, in thee, concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, 
thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Okay, that's one of the Ten Commandments. That's one of the commandments he, he, he gives back there. Now, um, I, I want you guys to see what, what, what Peter's saying there. He says, when you put somebody under the law, you're tempting God. So, you shouldn't just do it because it's it's not the right thing. It's not the wrong thing to do. It's not the right thing to do. It's testing God. It's tempting God. It's he, the the issue there with, with with Satan was he said you know what the Scripture says if you cast yourself down the angels will come and, and pick you up tempt God let's see if that's true or not now obviously it is true right we 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 look at those issues when you put somebody into the law it's the same thing you're tempting God which the Lord Jesus Christ said a person ought not do now I understand that you know that's he's speaking to the nation of Israel there but. But here we, we shouldn't either. So when, when, we, when we put people under the law, under that performance-based system, or we tell somebody they need to go do this, 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 and this, they're not li you, that's not living unto God. That's not a walk of faith. That's tempting God. So think about that. Some of these people that, that, that we just talked about baptism, when somebody comes along and says, okay, now that you're saved, you need to get baptized. No, that's tempting God. That's mm -hmm. not a walk of faith. That's not pleasing God. That's tempting God. When and there's you, all those people that didn't know that. They know it. When you go to the L, when, when you claim a healing verse that doesn't apply to you today, that's not a walk of faith. That's tempting God. God, is that verse going to work or not? That's what Satan, or that's what Jesus could have said, right? He could say, yeah, I'm going to test that verse. And jumped off. When it's exactly, oh so you, my. you, you under, uh, understand the seriousness of living in a performance-based acceptance system. It's tempting God, and that's something we ought not do. Right. It, it's that doesn't use the word tempting, but it uses the word murmuring. Think about when Israel came out of Egypt, and they murmured, and they tempted, and they murmured, and they tempted God the whole time out. And you know, and, and if they should have learned a lesson from that. So I just want want you to be real careful here about how serious this issue about putting people under under the law is. You know. One thing that just, you know, I never thought about it like that. Yeah, I haven't either. So I'm, I'm thinking at the same time, and I'm sure glad we're in the grace. Oh, yes. amen. Because, you know, the Bible said, Be not conformed to this world, but we be transformed by the renewing of the mind. So we continue, we want to do that. But we're not under the pressure that if we fall short, that we're going to be punished. I know. But, but as we learn and we want to do right, we do that. But not under the penalty of, if you stumble, I'm going to punish you. Right. You know. If we violate that'd be, that'd be fear. that, if we violate that very verse, we're still under grace. Yeah. We don't have the condemnation of that verse coming our way. I mean, you, how amazing is that? If we do put somebody under under the law, or if, it, if it's ourselves, and we do go down that path of tempting God, we're still already forgiven. Yeah, that's amazing. That that, that that's that, that's a that's a love that abounds. Mm -hmm. That's that's wonderful. That's powerful grace. It is, and, and that's yeah. the kind of thing you want to put in your little back in your head to think about when you feel bad and you feel like, well, I, you know, I failed God, or God couldn't love me, or or you know, I'm just a wretched person. Man, even if I violate that very verse, He's still going to love me and he show grace towards me. You know, when we we look at also that the, the kingdom of heaven will be established, the when Jesus is sitting on the throne, He's going to be ruling with a lot of iron. Okay, they're going to be back under the law. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a benevolent rule, but if someone chooses to go wrong, it, it's going to be instant yes. judgment. Yes. Where we we don't have that to deal with. Right, right. exactly. Exactly. Yeah, when, he, when, when he's ruling with a rod of iron, there's going to be no, well, let me tell you my extenuating circumstances. Yeah. You know, he, <laughs> let me give you my justification. According to truth, as it says in Romans. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. E e exactly. The other thing I want you to see is I, talk, I want to talk a little bit about this yoke, the, the, this legalism that, that's been put upon us. He says, you know, therefore, why tempt you guys? What, and, you know, you can kind of t see the frustration, right? Why, why are you guys tempted, God? Why are you doing what you know you ought not do? And... Um, but he says, to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. And, you know, I thought about this, and instead of going looking at 
countless verses in the Old Testament, just time and time again, you can see that Israel could not keep the law. Right. They couldn't go. I mean, even their, their hero, Sol Solomon had, what, 500 wives, 300 wives, 500 concubines, or, or, or whatever it is, which really calls into question how smart he really was. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but and, and, and the issue was there, he went, he went after their gods. You know, yeah. they, they weren't yeah. supposed to, they weren't supposed to, to mix with the other, with the other nations, not because God's a racist, but because he didn't want his nation going after those other gods. And then that was represented, that's the whole reason they, they couldn't wear, wear mixed clothing, right? They, they wouldn't have a, a cotton poly blend. Um, it had to be all, because they, they were supposed to be that difference. That's why they, they, there was a difference between clean and unclean animals to show that, that clear division. And every time they violated it, it showed again that they couldn't keep this law mm -hmm. um, to the point where it gets so bad that God says, calls Nebuchadnezzar and says, all right, Nebuchadnezzar, come down and go get them. And they're out of their land for you know for the first 400 years, but then they have been continued to be. But look over at Matthew 23. And we're going to get all upset at a group of people, and then we're going to have to think about our own selves. I'm sorry, Matthew what? 23. 23. Matthew 23, verse 1. It says, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, o therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do, you not, do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. You understand what he's saying yeah. there? They, they have the authority. They are a leader. They say what Moses said to do. So you do what they say, if it, you know, if it's what Moses says. But don't do what they do, because they don't do what they say. Yeah, they're okay. hypocrites. Okay. Now look at verse 4. For they bind heavy burdens, and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. You see, you're saying that there's this terrible yoke of bondage that's on these that, that's on the nation of Israel at this time, and the Pharisees, the leaders that are supposed to be showing them the way, actually make that bondage harder. They add all those different things to it, all the things they make it harder, and and you go, well, boy, why would anybody do that? And you, you know, like I said, you you, you get angry at these people. I mean, were they so foolish? But hungry. but don't we do the same thing? Right, we want we want to stop a we want to stop things going on in life. Don't don't we come up with a law based system a lot of times to do it, or somebody disappoints us, somebody violates us, and we kind of grind on them a little bit, and maybe make it worse and worse and worse. And what are we doing? Instead of showing grace, we put them under that yoke of bondage, and then we make that yoke of bondage a little tighter and a little tighter and a little harder. And that that's not at all what we should be doing. The opposite of that is over in Galatians. Look at Galatians five. Galatians what? Five. Galatians five one. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, yep. and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You see the complete difference there? <laughs> they were in Israel was under that yoke of bondage. <clears throat> in Christ, we have liberty. And our loved ones, the ones around us, have that liberty too. Now, we're not talking about being codependent and, 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 and enabling people to do bad things. But we are talking about te about understanding that we have liberty to make decisions in the circumstances in our life based on doctrine getting built up in us. Not based on our own thinking. Right. But based or on our doctrine. Emotions. Or our emotions. <laughs> but on doctrine getting built up in us, and then we go out and apply it. What we don't do, and what he, the argument he's making, we'll, we'll lead it more verses here in a second is but you know what stand in your liberty understand the liberty understand the grace that you're under being in Christ 
don't go back and put yourself under that performance-based acceptance system. Mm -hmm. Because the, the reason you put, ultimately, I think if you think this one through, you, you, you go, well, that's pretty true. When you put yourself under a performance-based acceptance system, it's because you're already feeling bad about yourself. And all that, that, that law system does is make you feel worse, right? If you, you feel like a failure, so you figure you got to go find a system to make you feel better, to do better, so you feel better, and then you, you, you fail at the system, and you feel worse, worse, and you feel worse, and now you've got that bondage. And finally, the point, you feel so bad, what happens? You just get locked up. You withdraw. You don't want to be around people. You don't think. You put the Bible away, because all it's going to do now, excuse make me, is you condemn you. Yeah. And make you feel bad. And you, 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 because you get wrapped up in that, instead of standing in the liberty, in the liberty that you have in Christ. Yeah, I love the way he says it, too. Stand in there fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Mm -hmm. Boy, Christ made you free from that law system. And then he says, he doesn't say like I say, you know, don't go put yourself back under the law. He says, don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Entangled. We were just down at the beach. We went on a five-mile hike, this beautiful hike. All the way out into the ocean. It was so cool, this peninsula, all the way out in the ocean, two and a half miles out and two and a half miles back. Just beautiful. But going through it, you're in a forest. And what the what they've done keep, keep is so much of it is these roots, and they are entangled. Totally. They're, They're totally strong. all over the place. To the point where with one, if one tree falls, a lot of times it takes the other tree with it because they're so entangled. And plus, people are walking on them all the time, and it's not, they're so entangled that human traffic can't right. ruin when, it. You, when, know? you know, there's another part of the path that's nice little pine needles, right? And you just go, you're not paying attention. You you have a little mental liberty, if I can put it that way, because you're out looking and enjoying everything. But you come to where all these things are, these roots are tangled up. They're strong. You're focused. Because even on your best day, I mean, we all, everybody tripped at one, at one point. And, and as I think about that, man, you, that, that, that yoke of bondage just is entangling. It takes all of your attention, all of your focus, and it's still going to trip you. Mm -hmm. But that's not where we are. We have liberty in Christ. All right, look. And that goes back to living in gratitude because yeah. every moment of every day we should be so grateful that we can stand in the liberty that we have. Because, and, and, and this verse tells us why we have it. It's because of Christ. Right. Christ is, it's Christ that's made us free. Yep. Verse 2 says, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Okay, just because you do the law, just because you get circumcised, that, that that doesn't make you any better. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Right. So if your if if your whole basis for your righteousness is based on circumcision or based on doing the law, you have to do it all. Mm -hmm. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Mm -hmm. Now, he doesn't mean you've lost your salvation or you've fallen out of out of the grace package. Okay, because who's justified by the law? Um, the Jews that could do it. People that do it. We can't make ourselves a law. Well, we can't do it. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. So who's justified Who's justified by the law? Today? No one. Nobody. So what he's talking about here is, is whoever, you, if you're putting yourself under the law to try and get right with God, then you've fallen from grace, and you're no longer living by those grace principles. Oh. Okay? Because you can't, you can't do the law and live by grace. You can't live by grace and live by the law. They're mutually exclusive. Right. So we want to be careful when we read this so we don't read it as we can lose, lose our salvation or, or something like that. He's talking about, and, and then Christ has become no effect, no, uh, no effect to you because where is our righteousness to be found? Mm -hmm. in, yeah, in, in Christ. Of, I think a lot of people, they, they, people that uh, say you lose your salvation, I think they use that, that you, they fall from grace. That's right. That's exactly what they, they, they that's, that's the exact verse that they use. Galatians 2.21 says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And you guys have heard me say, it doesn't say Christ died in vain. Christ is, is dead, dead in vain. 
So, oh. be very, be very, it doesn't say anything about Christ's death being in vain. It's, he's still dead, is what that verse says. It's current. Mm. It is. Yeah. So when you're always, now, now you've already, now, theoretically, right, by the time you come to Galatians 5, you've read Galatians 2. So you already understand that righteousness does not come by the law. So you come over here, and you, now you understand how Christ has become of no effect to you, whosoever of you ever justify the law. Trying to live by the law, trying to justify yourself by the law, by that yoke of bondage, means Christ has become of no effect to you. You're still saved, but in your walk, in your sanctification, in your ability to live a life pleasing unto God, Christ isn't doing anything for you. Because you're relying on your personal yeah, righteousness. right. I can do it. I don't need Christ. I can do it. And we know nobody ever says that in their mind, but that's that's, that's what their actions that, that's show. That's the way it, it yeah. works. Keep a hand here and jump over to Philippians three real fast. Philippians three verse nine. You're in Galatians, then it's Ephesians, Col Philippians, Colossians. We want Philippians 3, verse 9. It says, And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. See, we need that righteousness which is by the faith of Christ, which is by faith. Trying to get that righteousness of the law, what he's talking about over here in chapter 5, that just puts us back in bondage mm -hmm. over in Galatians. It makes Christ has become of no effect. Christ isn't, isn't, we're not taking advantage. We're not appropriating all those things that we have being in Christ if we've said, hey, I don't need that. I can do it through the law. Mm -hmm. I can get myself, I can make God happy with me by living under the law. And that's the issue that was going on in the church in Galatia. Uh, verse 5, in verse, back in Galatians 5. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. That's a powerful verse right there. We, through the Spirit, so it's by it's, but through the Spirit that we get this righteousness. We wait for the hope. Now, how, what's our definition of hope? Earnest expectation. Earnest expectation. We wait for that earnest expectation of righteousness by faith. We under that faith there would be would be our faith. We are we are we are waiting through the Spirit for that hope of righteousness. We know that if we wait on the Spirit, the fruits of righteousness will work out in us because the fruits of the Spirit will work out will will work out in us. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything. Back to verse 2. Hey, if you be circumcised, yeah. Christ doesn't do anything for you. Nor uncircumcision. The issue, that's not the issue. Right. But faith, <clears throat> with, which worketh by love. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? So, so far in this, what, what are the two things he's talking about? He's comparing to each other. The law and grace. Law and grace. So he says, you did run well. And he, 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 he's, got, he, he's clearly making the argument that the grace is the good thing and the law is the bad thing for mm -hmm. us today, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So ye did run well. They were under grace. They were, they were living under grace once. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? What I want you to see is here, he calls what he is saying the truth. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying is go live according to grace, not according to the law. Um. Look at down at verse 13. For brethren, we have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion of the flesh, right. but by love serve one another. Yep. Right, and then you think, well, why would he have to remind us of that? Well, because we're all flesh. And we, well, we have liberty, we can do anything we want. He actually gets accused of telling people, well, you go out and live any way you want because you're saved, it doesn't matter. And of course. Use that liberty to love one another. Exactly. Exactly. I look over at James 2. Book of Hebrew and then James 2. James 2.
verse 10 says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Man. That's tough. Think about think, 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 I mean, think about some of those. There's things. no grace there. No, but think about <laughs> okay. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't work on the Sabbath. Now, that's not for us today. But don't, I mean, don't serve it, any other god. But, but but does that really? I mean, if I walk too far on a Sabbath, is that really a big deal? I mean, really? And because that was what it was. They figured out that they came up with. Well, I can I can walk so far on on a Saturday, and anything more than that. That's what Jesus says. Pray that you're. Your uh, your flight doesn't happen on the Sabbath because they can only go so far and be within the law, and, you know. And I mean, that that really an issue. But yeah, you know, you're focused on the on, on the big ones, and then you accidentally walk a little too far on a Saturday. There's a guy back in the Old Testament; he was out picking up sticks on a Saturday, stoned to death. Was it that Stephen? No, no, that was I can't remember his name. Um, I didn't even know it tells you his name. I don't remember. Yeah. What was the general statement? The thing people well, don't understand is the law, according to God, divine holy law, demands absolute perfection. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so any one point, you broke it. That's right. Right. That's and that's true. where in, in Romans chapter 8, verse, what, verse 3 or whatever, that the righteousness of the law was fulfilled in us who walk, not after the flesh, but after yeah, the spirit. That's right. So he fulfilled that, that we couldn't do. That's right. We were talking before we got started. Jesus, Jesus is going to do. God's going to do for Israel what they couldn't do for themselves. Yeah. He does it for us yeah. too. We right. can't do it. We can't do. It. He gave us grace, and we still want to put ourselves under the law. Mm -hmm. That one verse uh, what they well, we know it because we can look back, but they should. It seemed like they should have been able to look and see, well, there's only a little over 600 rules. Um, there ain't no way I can do them all. Mm -hmm. Just every day they got to know that. Right. We know it. They had, to count on, they, had, they had to count on God five times, and they couldn't do it. Between and, Egypt, and, or is, yeah, Egypt and Sinai. Yeah. yeah. You know, it just... I shake my head. I'm, I'm so glad we're not under the law. Oh, yeah. I know. I mean, just yeah. Think about think about all the all the things you do for yourself that maybe aren't maybe just to get through your day. I need to do this and 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 not this. And so you set up a a law system that I can just to get through the day. I mean, it's not trying to correct sin, just living your life. How often do you fail your own self? Yeah. You know, yeah. can't you at least give yourself a standard you can hit? <laughs> you know? no. And no matter how much you dim down that standard, it's going to get worse and worse. Well, Paul in, in Romans 12 said, I beseech, beseech you, therefore, brethren, the mercies of God, that you present your bodies in living mm -hmm. sacrifice. If we just, if we could just start thinking back to all of the mercies, because when you start, just like you talk about the law now, that was way beyond anything. We, we don't think about it because we've had it so easy. But it, those people back then, that's a full-time effort. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. And then didn't fall short. And lived in fear because yeah. of it, yeah. Hey, how do you think it would be? You go up to the temple, you make your sacrifice, you're feeling good, you walk out, you get down, and you don't even get home. Yeah. And you got to make an appointment to go back next week. You got out here on the highway, the guy cut you off, and yeah. you broke it again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that would be rough. Look over at Second Corinthians 3. Remember we read, um, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Look at 2 Corinthians 3.17. Nevertheless, now, whoa, what am I reading? I'm reading 16, I want 17. 
Now, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. liberty. Notice it does not say where the spirit of the Lord is, is the law. Right. We still talk a lot about walk out of your identity in Christ. Walk after the spirit. Well, how do you know if you're doing that? Well, the easiest way to know if you're walking after the spirit or not is, do you find yourself back under the law? Right. The spirit will never take you back and put you back right. under a performance-based acceptance system. The spirit will never have you love somebody by putting them some underneath the law. That's a good, that, there's a good standard to know if you're really living by walking after the spirit or if you think you're walking after the spirit and walking after your own designs. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about a lot of these, these other things and then when I, you know, you've heard me say this before and it's, it's harsh, but those people that say that are, that are out saying, well, you have to be baptized and you have to tithe and you have to do this and you have to do that. That's not of the spirit. No. Period. Because the Spirit's not doing that program today. The Spirit's going to put you under liberty. The Spirit's going to make you feel okay because he put braces on your kid's teeth this week instead of putting it in the church offering. And he's going to, you know, because he got that, that cheerful giver thing. He's going to, the Spirit will never have you get baptized so that you can show people right. that something's happening inside you. The Spirit will keep you, keep you from that, but it'll make a change inside of you. And... You want to start a fight? You tell them that, you know. Yeah, we lost friends over that. Yeah. We lost friends over the healing. Yeah. The yeah. spirit will never take you to something God's not doing today. Seventh Day Adventists, of course, believe in in baptismal re regeneration. Mm -hmm. And I work with mm -hmm. a, a guy, just a really nice guy, and and he told me when we got through work one night, he said. I'm going up to church tonight. I'm going to get born again. I'm going to get baptized. Uh, wow. I, you know, it's hard to deal with that because you're you're afraid you might destroy his faith. But at the same time, you need to say something. <clears throat> I figured out how to talk to him later, but I just thought, wow, when they put people under that kind of a a law system to think that just dunking in water is going mm -hmm. to do it. Right. They don't they understand. Don't it's really all about say. the spirit. It doesn't have to do anything with the flesh. Yeah. And then the other thing goes back, you know, uh, we, I think everybody in here, I don't have this story, but I think several people in here have had friends that have been told this when they change churches, they have to get baptized in that church to become a member of that church. Mm -hmm. There's the very mm -hmm. definition of a performance based acceptance system. We'll accept you into our church if you do this. This, this fleshly thing. But they don't ask them, are you saved? Or tell us how you got saved. And that's, that, that's not, that, yeah. We had a pastor that would, though. Yeah, yeah. that's what they should be talking about. I tell know. me about your salvation. Yeah. Well, not, he would <coughs> call the members and talk to them after My he dad, became we, pastor. They, yeah. you, you were supposed to be baptized when you were saved. He pastored a church over in Illinois, and after he had dinner while he and my mother they presented themselves to church we become members and the church told us the only way you could be members is that you'd have to be baptized now my mm -hmm. dad is pastoring the, the church but he, they would he, they told him he'd have to be baptized before he wow and the thing is god doesn't talk about that at all in the bible so they're just making up their own rules at the yeah. Baptist church where i was the first church i went to when i was saved um, when they <clears throat> they had told me uh, oh you got to show the outward sign of being baptized and I said okay uh, didn't know any different and when I went up there uh, they asked me I said well okay I want to be baptized <coughs> but I want to withhold my membership from the church until I've investigated it a little bit more and they almost wouldn't baptize me. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, hey, you know, <coughs> you guys probably know it better than I do, but but because you guys are closer to it or coming out of that. But yeah, baptism—it's a sacred cow in Christianity today. It's 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 for from a guy that's never been baptized. 
and and it, it's just when I hear about baptism, it, for me, it's really weird. I don't uh, just on a human level. I mean, it's very cultish in the, the way it, it has become. And I know it's a, you know it's a big deal, and parents get excited about it and everything. But wow, it's just there's a few groups that that don't believe in it. Like I think Plymouth Brethren, well, we have a ministry in Corning, California, and the the church that they said that they don't believe in baptism, water baptism. And then the people that do these signs, they they're kind of in that same group. They don't okay. believe in the uh, yeah. water. I don't think the Quakers do either, do they? No. Uh, yeah, they don't. Mm. Yeah, there are groups out there, but the groups that do use it, I mean, they 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 use it just just like a like the wall. Mm-hmm. Some of them they they believe that it's an outward sign, and others believe it's actual right work salvation. that you need to right. do. Right. And you know what? But in performance, they're saying something that they don't believe. Because they say it's an outward sign when, in fact, they're making it a part of salvation by yeah, saying you sure. can't be in the church. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, Dave. No, know. you're 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 exactly right, and it's um, it it is it is actually the opposite of what they want to be teaching. Yeah, you because know, they grace plus nothing will accept baptism, and tithing and church membership and we get them under a performance system yeah exactly if you'll perform then you can have and and you know these are not people teaching the prosperity gospel these are just you know these dear some you know we have some neighbors that just took the whole family down and went and got baptized in some river somewhere and i'm just going oh man okay um uh, we want to get galatians 3 and go back to acts 15 so you know the takeaway there is yeah the law is a yoke upon the neck that yeah. nobody, nobody can nobody can bear. Right. Nobody can bear. Acts fifteen verse eleven. It's a very important the way the words are put together in this verse. But we now he's speaking of Israel or the, the twelve yeah the Israel. We believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we, Israel, shall be saved, even as they, the Gentiles. For we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, Israel shall be saved, even as the Gentiles. Does not, it does not say the other way. It does not say that we believe through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Gentiles shall be saved, even as Israel. And it's an important distinction. Peter says, we shall be saved, speaking of Israel, mm -hmm. as they are. Oh, I see. It's not. 1511. We is not the Gentiles, no, and they is Israel? Acts. No. But we have to remember who's talking. I know. I had it backwards. I thought we was the Gentiles. But who's talking? Oh, uh, Peter. Peter. And, and Peter is a Jew or Gentile. He's a Jew. Later of the Twelve. We believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Oh, okay. So people want to come along and they want to say, see, we get saved the same way Israel Israel did by putting ourselves under the law or performing or doing this. But that's what it says. It's just it's just the opposite. Through the grace of the Lord Jesus, we shall be saved even as they. See, even Peter's starting to recognize now the program has changed a little bit there. Yeah. Now, because how are we saved? By grace through faith, right? Mm -hmm. Not of the law. But Israel wasn't always well, wasn't always that way. Look over at Galatians three now. Hey, we've been here long enough. Let me just ask a question. You guys, when you go to Acts fifteen, what book in Paul's epistles is going to line up with that chapter? Galatians. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear the question. When we're in Acts fifteen. What 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 book do you automatically know lines up with that in Paul's epistles? Galatians, There's right? Chapter one, two, there, where Paul is. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so Galatians three, verse uh, verse eleven. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Verse ten. Pick one. <laughs> Ver, yeah, verse ten, and we'll pick up what we were talking about with the last verse. For as many are of the works of the law are under the curse. 
For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. We, we, we've seen that in, said in many different ways just here this evening, haven't we, in different verses. You can go back mm -hmm. to the Old Testament and see a lot that you got to do it all. Right. Just doing 99%, that's a fail. Right. Okay? 99.99% is a fail. 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, mm -hmm. it's evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. He says the law is not of faith, right? Clearly. Mm -hmm. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. That's the law. Now, that is a quote of many, many scriptures. That's Nehemiah 9.29, Ezra 20.11, and on and on. You can find that verse throughout the Old Testament where Moses says, if you'll live in these statutes you'll live. In other words, if you do the law, you'll be declared righteous. Mm -hmm. That's how Israel was saved. Are we saved that way? No. No. Look at verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham, what's that, being declared righteous, Mm -hmm. might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that mm -hmm. we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. faith. The issue is faith. So how is Israel saved? Now, now we're going to... Peter's understanding now that even Israel is saved by grace. Because they never could do the law, right? We've talked about this many times. Moses, David, Abraham, they were all saved by grace essentially. Right. Because they responded positively. I'm pointing at this. To, to what God the said. Picture, right? uh, they responded positively to what God said. They continued to sin like we all do. God declared them righteous based on the future coming of the cross. Now, they didn't know about that. But they but, but, but they did. did. And it was, um, look over at Romans. Romans, what do I want? <laughs> 10, 11, Romans 11. Verse 25. Yep. <laughs> you knew that, huh? I got an underline. <laughs> <laughs> For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness is part and has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Paul is just now re re revealing this mystery. This is not something you could find in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. that Israel's going to be blinded until the Gentiles, the fullness of them, comes in. And so all Israel shall be saved. Mm -hmm. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when, future tense, I shall take away their sins. Now, as concerning the gospel, they're enemies for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Here's what we wanted to get to. Remember, he, Peter said, we're going to get saved even as they do. Mm -hmm. Okay. For as ye, as the Gentiles, in time past have not believed God, Correct? We didn't, yes. the Gentiles in time past didn't believe God, right? That's what the bottom line of our chart's all about. Yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Does that make sense? For Israel's past, unbelief. In time past, we didn't believe God, right? Starting at the Tower of Babel. See, we're supposed to fill the earth. We say, we got a better way. So he gives us up. And doesn't have any mercy for us. The only way we have a good relationship with God is through the nation of Israel. But now God has mercy on us, what? Through the fall of Israel. You see that? Because they fell, God can have mercy on us. Through their unbelief. So through their unbelief, right? They didn't believe. They fell. God had mercy on us. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. Mm. For, for God hath concluded them all in unbelief. Now, if you just stop there, 
It's a terrible verse because that means everybody's going to hell. Right. But there's a comma, not a period. And he says, God hath concluded them all in unbelief. That Not that he might send them to hell, but that he might have mercy upon oh, all. all. He's concluded them in unbelief. They fell. Everybody's equal before the cross now, not at Israel's level, at this level, so he can have mercy on everybody. Mm -hmm. You get that? Yeah. Look at, the, 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 look at what the very next verse says. Just, uh, Paul just, you can just tell sometimes just, it just bubbles out of him sometimes. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. It's just the big old amen from Paul right there yeah. in the middle of the passage, right? That's how they're saved as we are now. God, there's he's no respecter of persons. He's concluded the nation in unbelief. Mm -hmm. He's not expecting them to keep that law thing anymore because they can't. He's having mercy on them. He's having mercy on them. He's saying, okay, you can get saved according to Paul's gospel now. Okay. We want to be very careful, be, be very sure that what he, Steve, uh, Paul, uh, Peter is talking about there is everybody saved by grace through faith, not according to the law. And, and that, was, that was signified when he went to Cornelius. Right, because those people, in, when we we've read that issue several times about Cornelius, why did the Holy Spirit come on 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 them? What did they do? Did they get baptized? No, they believed. They just believed, right there in the middle of his thing in Peter's sermon. The Holy Spirit interrupts the the, the meeting <laughs> and comes down upon them because they, they believed. Because they believed, they didn't do anything first. All of them at once. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We had a ministry and just east of Columbus, Ohio, and uh, one of the people that worked with us in Dayton, he was preaching over there, and during the service, he, he, was, he wasn't finished with the sermon, but this driver stood up and said, I want to be saved, and, and if he talk, started talking to God, he wanted to be saved. Well, later, after the service over, this other guy worked with us, he come up to me and says, uh, are you saved? He said, I just got saved, <laughs> and he didn't do it the way that he expected it. I mean. In other words, Arnold Russell was the guy that he did. He was good at witnessing. He didn't do it in order. He didn't do it in order. He didn't do it the way he expected it to be. He's supposed to, he's supposed to wait until the sermon's over. Right, exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait till the altar call, right? Yeah. 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 It's just between his heart and God. Yep. That's a. He didn't know any better. That's a great thing when somebody just. I did, I'm not waiting. Yeah. Today's the day of salvation, the right? The gospel is the power of God to salvation. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And you know, good on, on a person like that for not waiting. You never know what could happen in the next 15, 20 minutes, right? Um, so the belief was in his heart whether he said it Exactly. Or well, that's the thing. That's that, the thing. That, that, you know, Dorothy, that's such, a, that's such a great point. The man got saved before he stood up, yes. is what it sounds like, you know. Um, with the heart and I believe unto God. That's right. Yep. That's right. You know, so with the mouth confession is made to salvation. Yeah. You, you just said it. You don't. Yeah, and you know, you don't have to do anything. You just have to. You could have sat there quietly and believed and walked out and been just as saved as doing what he did do. And I understand yeah. he gets excited. I mean, I'm not blaming yeah. the guy for getting for that. But anyway, I mean, that's great. Probably somebody else look at him. I want some of that. <laughs> you know, it was good for the people that were ministering. Absolutely. There. Absolutely. Um, but that's a, that's a great point. That's one of the things that I keep having to explain to people when they they ask me about why you have faith, and I just usually do a little bit of my testimony, and and they'll say, "But you didn't ask God to save you." I said, "No, but my heart did, because what I said was." Uh, God, I don't know if you're real or not, but if you are, I want what you got to offer, and I'll be yours forever. That's just as good as if I said, uh, so I God come, saved me. Coming come to the issue of understanding that it was what Jesus did on the cross, um, you know, is is, is, the, is the issue. When people get to the point and say, okay, I understand that the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is what saved me, that's just the thinking, you know, the this issue of having to say the the sinner's prayer, yeah. you know, 
and and things like that. It just, I mean, you can say the sinner's to... prayer eight times, and if your heart doesn't believe it, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, yeah. exactly. If you don't, just because you, you said it doesn't mean you're saved. You can even yeah. say, "Hey, I want to be saved. What do I need to do?" And waiting for that checklist of things to do. You just, yeah, you just got to believe that what, what what God says saves you, saves you. And for us, I mean, for everybody, but we happen to have the advantage that we get that we, we know the object of our faith. Right, we're after cross, the cross. The events, yeah. of, the events of the cross. David and Moses and those guys, they didn't understand the object of their faith. They just believed God. The object of the faith was was the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, I want to get one more thing. I wanted to get two, but I'm only going to get one thing. Yeah, the other one's going to take some time. Okay. Yeah, look back at Acts 15. Acts 15 and 1 Corinthians 1. So the thing you want to remember in verse 11 is not saved through the law. Gentiles are not now saved as Israel used to be, that Israel is now saved by grace through faith. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now they still had to do, they, they still had issues that they were, were had to do. I mean, that, that if they were going to get saved according to Peter's gospel, it was still by grace through faith, but they that their faith was manifested through their works at that time, whereas the Gentiles is not. And, that, and that's only for until that group died off because Paul starts his ministry and really anybody that's not saved at that point from, is going to be with from, Paul. From this point on, just about anybody that gets saved really is getting, is getting saved according to Paul's gospel. Right, right. You know, the ones that I can think of, family members, you know, children of people that were part of the little flock and, and you know, that, I don't know exactly how that works out. But anyhow, so that, that's the thing you really want to do. Don't let somebody put that as a law verse but make it a grace verse. Uh, I just want to touch on 12 real quick and then we'll be done. It says, Then all the multitude kept silence, gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. He's, don't, don't forget who he's talking to. He's talking to a bunch of Jews here. Okay, That multitude is, is Jews. Barnabas and Paul declared the miracles and wonders that God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. It's interesting. He doesn't declare the gospel that he would speak. He, he spoke mm -hmm. though he may have done that but that's not what it says it says he declared the miracles and wonders now why would he do that because he usually look for a sign yep right 1 Corinthians one twenty two. for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom so here in the passage you, you, you can see several things uh, Peter stands up and reminds everybody what they already know that he has I don't want he hasn't he has lend lend his credibility to Paul's ministry he's not in charge of Paul's ministry that he has legitimate not, not even legitimized it but just, he it's rec recognized it it'd be a big maybe a good word recognize Paul's distinctive ministry and when he would have told, when Paul or Barnabas and Paul would have told this multitude this, they would have heard, they would have understood. Okay, he's doing the signs of an apostle. That and that is another witness to the recognition of Paul's unique ministry amongst the Jews. That, that that's who he's talking to here. Now, obviously, it would have had a witness to the Gentiles he was doing it in front of, but here he's just talking to them. So we just want to be be clear that we understand that he's trying to. He's laying out the groundwork. He's laying a, a message to Israel that, hey, I am, in fact, the, the apostle. And you see time and time again, he has to defend his apostleship. Right. But here, through the signs and the wonder, miracles and wonders, it's interesting the way he says it, too, as I'm just looking at this. He, does, he doesn't declare the miracles and wonders that he did among the Gentiles, but declaring the miracles and wonders that God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. So as he's saying, he's not he's not out there saying, well, I healed this guy and I healed this guy and I did. He says, God through me healed this and did this miracle and in, in, in this way. Again, giving witness that his authority is in fact is of God mm -hmm. and that nobody can come along. And again, I mean, you know, when you get over in Galatians, you see that the time and time again. If if you um, will notice in every single book that Paul writes, he defends his apostleship. Yeah. Even the book of Philemon. 
Um, you kind of got to search for it there, but it is there. Um, so uh, I want to be done for tonight, but we're going to look next time. If you want some homework, uh, compare Acts 15, 16, and 17, Acts 15, verse 16 and 17, with Amos verses 9, I'm sorry, Amos chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. Um, 16 and 17 is the quote of Amos 9, 11 and 12. Uh, and we'll talk about that next time. Amos what? Amos 9, 11 and 12. It's the, it's the quote of that passage. 9, 11 and 12. Amos 9, 11 and 12. And you'll notice 11 and 16 and 11, they're pretty close. 17 and 12 are different. And you will we'll, we'll have to reconcile those things next week, but we'll, we'll, we can do it. Acts 15, 16, and 17, and Amos 9, 11, and 12. And you're talking verses 15, 16, 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 15 through 17. Verses, I think, 15. You start with 15. Well, see, it's a, it's really 16. Yeah, the, the quote is 16, well, 16 and 17. 16 and 17 is what he said. So yeah. You did right. Yeah, Acts 15, right. Acts 15, verses 16 and 17. And Amos 9, verse 11 and 12. This is really cool. I haven't had any homework. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, don't you're going to see that, that the, 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 the second verses in both passages don't aren't, aren't perfectly, but we'll, we'll deal with that next week. Uh, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, I mean, it is a big deal, but it's not a, it's just the Holy Spirit giving us more insight than we had when we read just Amos. So uh, we'll end that there. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you. Um, as we study the, the book of Acts here, and, and we see Paul's ministry really really starting to take off, the issues there of, of your love and your, your willingness, your want, your desire, that all men, Jew and Gentile alike, be saved. And um, that by, by declaring Israel to be an unbelief, concluding them to be an unbelief, you're able to have mercy on everyone, both Jew and Gentile. Um, we're so thankful for your grace and for your love and for the finished work of your Son on the cross, Lord. Uh, we give you thanks. We give you praise. give you glory in all things. In your name, amen. 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 Yeah, yeah.